how to make your vacation home dream a reality. Don't worry, I'm not gonna try to sell you some timeshare here. No, this is a video about how to not only find the right property, but convert that property into a vacation rental so that it actually becomes an investment that brings in money each month. So it makes you money and you can enjoy it as your vacation home. Hi, I'm Phil Pustiovsky with FreedomMentor.com. I'm a full-time real estate investor, real estate mentor and coach to many of the most successful real estate investors all across North America. I'm a best-selling author of the book, How to Be a Real Estate Investor. Thanks to you viewers, this YouTube channel is the number one for real estate investing. And I'm very excited to share this topic with you because not only could it be a dream come true for many, uh, but also it's something that I do personally. In fact, you're going to see up in this uh, direction of the video, um, on if you're watching on YouTube, this little eye symbol. And that actually will take you to the video of my vacation home, which is also a vacation rental. So a lot of what I'm going to share with you is some of the wisdom I've discovered from owning my own. Okay. What we're doing in this video, uh, number one, is give you some rules of thumb so you can get a better understanding of how this works and under what scenarios the, the sweet spot is to turn a, a dream vacation home into an actual vacation rental that brings in money. Then we're gonna talk about advantages and we'll talk about the disadvantages and things that you need to look out for. All right, so let's talk about the rules first. Let's dive right in. Okay, the rules. The number one rule that needs to be clarified when you're looking at different areas that you may consider to be the vacation home that is gonna turn this, this dream into a reality is the legality of short-term renting. Okay, now this is very important because the places that are the most likely to be ideal for vacation renting tend to have a lot of hotels, they tend to be an, an economy based on tourism, and it could be that that specific area has rules, laws related to what you can and can't do as far as short-term renting. So short-term renting is going to be less than one month. Okay, that's the important distinction. Because any any home, any, any uh, pr uh, private residence, you could rent on a month-to-month -month basis. But things get very different when you want to start doing either nightly or a certain number of nights, say three nights, four nights, something like that, uh, all the way up to weekly. And that's really the zone of this vacation rental concept. And since you can rent it out for so much more money, that's how this thing comes together. So the legality is absolutely critical. So when you start looking at this concept in more detail where you're looking at actual properties for sale and you're trying to run the numbers, Make sure you talk to somebody local, whether it's a property manager or the actual city itself, and learn more about the legality of short-term renting, because this is a big, big detail. And uh, in certain areas, they're, they give out what they call transient rental licenses. And so if you don't have one of those licenses, you can't do this. Now, of course, you could try. The problem is going to be that you'll probably get caught, because what makes this whole thing work these days is because there's a couple of websites out there and I'll talk more about them throughout this video. VRBO and HomeAway.com. Both of those are owned by the same company and then Airbnb. And what they do is they allow you to list your property. They already have all the customers on there. They're already spending the money um, in Google AdWords and driving traffic through organic. And so they've already got the customer base. And so you get your listing on there and you do it right and you make it very attractive, the customers will come. But that also makes it very public. So if you're going to try to skirt the legality uh, of the short-term rental rules in that specific area, uh, you're going to get caught. So don't do it. Okay. Uh, number two, you need either a long or at least more than one peak season. I'm going to do long slash, you know, two peak seasons, at least two. So perhaps you have seen the show on HGTV vacation home for free and in that show there's a contractor slash real estate agent that he'll take a couple that has a dream to buy uh, their own vacation home and they want that vacation home to break even meaning the amount of money coming in from the, 
the rental income will break even all their costs. And so what he does is he will pick an area um, that these people want to be in, and then he'll try to find a fixer-upper, he'll fix the home up because he's a contractor, and um, hopefully structure it in such a way where it makes money. And one of the things that you'll see on that show that becomes a problem are those areas where you have only one peak season. I'm going to give you a great example. Cape Cod. Cape Cod. This is a popular vacation spot in the summertime in Massachusetts, in Rhode Island and Connecticut, that, uh, that zone. So the problem is it really only has a peak season from about Memorial Day, so I'm going to say end of May, until August, uh, which is basically Labor Day somewhere in that zone and then outside of that the the temperature goes down and then you get in the winter time and you have this awful snow and rain and so there's there's really no reason to be on Cape Cod during the non-peak season now we can compare that to something like Lake Tahoe because Lake Tahoe and other mountain areas usually have two seasons right they've got your summertime and which in, in the case of Lake Tahoe absolutely gorgeous in the summer and then in the winter time they have all the snow so now you've got two seasons, and now you're giving yourself a bigger opportunity to bring in vacation rental income. And the other part to that is by having a long peak season, it gives you more time for you to enjoy it. Remember, if this is a vacation home, you need to be able to go to it too, right? You know, the, the temptation, of course, when you own something like this is every holiday, every peak season, you just want to, if you're an investor like me, you just want to send people in there and get it rented out but you actually have to book some of this time yourself because it is your vacation home. All right, so long seasons or at least two seasons make a big difference. Uh, my property is in the Florida Keys. Um, although there are many parts of Florida that would, it would fit for, the Florida Keys are, are kind of ideal because not only do you have two great seasons, you have the winter season and you have summer, but you also have times in between there where people are coming in there to go fishing because the fishing is so great and there's other things that are going on down there so you just have a long season in which to pull money um, and get in more vacation rental income. Okay, these two rules alone are incredibly important. I'm gonna throw in a third one, and that is that you probably wanna stick to the ones where you've got some uh, track record of success, okay? Now, this is where we get into this VRBO, and I hope the video can show it. I don't know if this is too low down there. VRBO slash home away. And y'all, this this is, you can write this down, but they're everywhere. It's not difficult. Just type in vacation rental and watch what happens. And then the other one is Airbnb. Okay, so these sites already have existing vacation rental owners who have posted their properties on there. And there already is uh, people that have gone there and they've already booked. And so that allows you to read the reviews and to look at the calendar and look at when it's already booked and look at the reviews of what people are saying. So you can establish whether it's an area or it's an actual like condo complex or a subdivision or a destination community, you can get a feel for what other people are already saying. And you want to be able to uh, position yourself in such a way where you don't have all the winds at your, um, in, you know, coming right at you, but the wind is at your back. Meaning, you're already buying a property in an area that people already love. And so you already have that huge benefit that people that from years ago have already been there once and say, well, if I ever go on vacation, I'm going back there. Does that make sense? So you can ride the, the wave of an already good area. I think that's a huge rule. So as you will see, if you watch that little, I'll keep that little eye right there, that little eye on mine, you'll see that you know that entire area where my property's at, people love it. They just love that area because it's wonderful. And so there's less work for me on an uphill battle. And so you know the, the key here is, and this is gonna be a, a huge rule. So that was the one through three. Number four here is going to be this. This is going to go again. If you watch a lot of my videos, this is going to go against what I typically preach. Here we go. You want a great property at a fair price. Great property. Fair price. Now, why is that such a deviation from what I teach? Well, if you've watched any of my other videos, I'm into the business of buying properties very cheap 
either fixing them up and selling them, fixing them up and renting them. Either way, looking for steals, stealing property basically, because I get such a good deal. And it's usually because the homeowner is in a crazy situation. So obviously we're, we are taking uh, care of our homeowners. We're not taking advantage of them in any way, but uh, I use the word steal because people, it clicks in their mind. Sorry, but if you want your dream vacation home to actually cash flow well, to be in a very good area, and to do what it is that you want it to do from a vacation rental standpoint and be a place you want to call your vacation home, you're going to need to get a great property at a fair price. Meaning this might actually, I know, dare I say this, if you're a, a big fan of mine, you'll be shocked I'm about to say this, <gasps> traditional purchase, boom. This might mean that you do, you, you hire a real estate agent and you make offers and you go get a loan and all that traditional stuff. Is it possible to use creative techniques that I teach to find a great property and acquire it at a fair price with creative techniques? It is possible, but that's a needle within the largest haystack you can imagine. It is possible, but it's very difficult, and here's why. Because when you get into areas whereby they can vacation rent and make more money uh, than, than what it's going to cost to own them, you don't have very many motivated sellers. They're not motivated because it's making them money in most cases, unless they have just completely ignored uh, the concept of vacation renting, which that's possible, but it's rare because the, the, the better the area, the more vacation uh, destination like it is, the more likely the people who actually own there have already figured out the concept of a vacation rental or some property managers already hit them with 10 direct mail letters. So the, the concept here is you're going to have to find a great property and you're not going to probably be able to steal it. You're going to have to go the traditional purchase route with an agent and a, and a mortgage uh, that you put your name to and all that stuff. But that's okay because it is your vacation home, so you can buy it from a loan perspective as a second home, um, and then you can later convert it to a, a vacation rental if you'd like. And the interest rate can be very low, uh, but this also, this kind of spills right into our, um, our drawback issue. It is gonna be required that you probably have to be able to get a loan. Yes, you can use creative techniques, owner financing subject to those kind of things. A lot harder to find that, that perfect home that's gonna cash flow well as a vacation rental. So. That is a drawback, however, this is just a rule that we've discovered from doing this for so long and, and, and running the numbers in so many different areas. So you've got to run the numbers, and you can do that easily if we go back to the idea that you can go to Airbnb, you can go to VRBO, Home Away, and you can look what other people are charging, you can establish what those rates are, and you can start to do the numbers and, and work them out. And if you have a nice low interest rate on your mortgage, uh, all the better. Okay, so those are the main rules. Now let's get into, of course, the advantages. Some of these are pretty obvious. What are our advantages? Well, the first thing is this. You can own a vacation home and not feel like you're just blowing money on some vacation home. No, because it's an investment. So the first big advantage is that it's an investment. It can make you money. Yes, it's a rental property, so you get all those benefits of depreciation. And the fact that whatever money you earn uh, can typically be offset by the depreciation and the other expenses, so you may not be actually paying much in the way of taxes on that income. That's a huge, huge advantage. Owning rental property, I have videos on this. It's just powerful stuff from a financial standpoint. Uh, the other advantage is free vacations. Well, I say free, now it's not totally free because you've got to drive there or fly there um, but you, you you actual vacation stays are free and that is kind of wonderful you don't have to worry about each night that when you're staying there you have to maximize everything because you're paying so much it's free the other people are paying for your vacations it's wonderful that way and I love the fact that you can finally, for most people, get that vacation home that for so many people thought it was just this distant dream that when they were a billionaire, they could afford it. Wait a minute, you might be able to afford it right now. 
And you might be able to afford that today. I mean, yes, it is important to have delayed gratification in life, but we only live once, and for the most part, most people don't live as long as they want to. <laughs> so uh, we do need to also balance the idea of in the future with enjoying today as well. Does that make sense? So that allows us to, and that would be my next thing, you can enjoy today. You don't have to wait forever. So those are advantages. And let's talk about some disadvantages, some of which we've already kind of mentioned, um, but we'll also talk about a few others. So the disadvantages, and this one is, in my opinion, the biggest one um, by far is gonna be that you have to get a mortgage, and you gotta have, in, uh, in most cases, I'm just saying in most cases, I mean, it is humanly possible, but it's, it's very rare, uh, which, what, what comes with a mortgage? Dun, 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 a down payment, that's no fun. Down payment, you've got uh, the bill, you have to actually be able to you know, borrow the money. If it's a second home, you have to have the income to be able to prove it and support it. Uh, you could also try to do it as an investor loan and be able to show if it was an existing vacation rental, you could potentially be able to show those receipts and then they might be able to uh, help offset from a debt to income uh, standpoint for your mortgage application, but then your down payment's gonna be bigger. You know, then they may want 20% or 30% down as opposed to maybe 10% down or 15% down. Okay, uh, another big uh, drawback that you have to be careful of, and that is the cost to furnish. Now, if it's already furnished, great, but you may still have to upgrade some of those furnishings. So this right here is not something you can get into a loan. You're gonna have to have a little bit of money here to furnish this thing. Now you can get creative with some of your furnishing ideas to make it look great and not be that expensive. And if you're an HGTV fan, you might have all kinds of tips on what to do there. Um, but that's a drawback. Uh, I would say that a disadvantage you have to be aware of is that uh, you're gonna have to balance, um, you have to balance your vacations, okay? Because there is a bit of a trade-off here. And that is the bigger peak weekends, whether it be July 4th, Labor Day, Christmas, Thanksgiving. I mean, some of these larger holidays, uh, you may want to give those up and give that to the vacation renter because that's where you make some of your peak money. So you gotta balance that. That can be a bit of a disadvantage. However, if it's making you money each month and your vacations are free, it's probably worth it. Um, another thing that, that people have brought up as far as a disadvantage it has to do with the, uh, the issue of um, you know, tenants trashing the place. Now, I would say this. Your first big rule is you're gonna be owning a rental property, so watch my other video on what every landlord should know about property management. I mean, there are certain fundamental keys to property management that you have to have in place no matter what. But here's the thing. You're gonna get a damage deposit in most cases, especially with the Airbnb, VRBO, home away world. And if you if you get a nice property in a nice area that's very family friendly, for example, typically the, 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 the damage is gonna be a minimum. I mean, how much damage can they really do in a week? Now, again, if it's this crazy party and the people are on drugs and they just go completely bonkers, that's different, right? But if you're in a family friendly area that is not uh, huge on uh, drugs and craziness, maybe the exact opposite of Las Vegas strip, so anywhere but the strip of Las Vegas, right? Uh, then you're probably going to be, this is gonna be minimized. And here's the thing, and this is what I love. I should have put this as an advantage. One of the things about property management that's so key is you have to keep an eye on things. Well, if it's your vacation home, you're gonna keep an eye on it because you're gonna get there from time to time. And so little things you might be able to do, you might be able to touch up things here and there with the paintbrush and little things, and it won't take up much time. So. I don't know that this is that big of a, of a disadvantage. There are ways that you protect yourself here, but in comparison to a normal rental, where if they don't pay you and they won't get out, you have to evict them, with this stuff, it's great. Very different world getting these people out of here. You know, it's like the hotel business. You know, if you don't pay your hotel bill, they can just hire a cop to knock on the door and get your butt out of there. So it's definitely a different world as far as being able to get the, the people out of there quickly, not the eviction process, and if they trash the place, they're not gonna be there very long, and uh, there's not that much they can do to trash the place. Uh, yes, this is gonna get a little bit more worn down. Yes, it will. But that means things like this. Maybe you don't put carpet everywhere, right? Maybe you put laminate, maybe you put hardwoods. So there's some things you can do for the long term that can help you with that. Um, 
I guess another disadvantage is you can't have the entire house fully stocked the way your current home is with clothes already in the drawer. You actually have to put a, your, your clothes from your original home into a suitcase when you go to your vacation home. But again, these are, these are minor little details. Okay, so those are the disadvantages. We talked about the advantages. Again, you can head over to uh, my property, hit that little eye in the top right corner. Um, I guess, yes, yeah, your, your top right corner. And you can check that out. And what I look for, of course, is to make money. So you may be thinking, well, what's the minimum profit you want to make? Well, I, I think that really just depends on where you're paying for it. But uh, I like to make, uh, you know, at least, you know, 20%, 10 to 20% um, overall uh, cash flow each month, if, if humanly possible. Uh, some things to keep in mind, you're going to have utilities. That's an, an additional expense each month. Um, certainly, you're going to have your, your taxes, your insurance, your mortgage payment if you had a mortgage. Uh, but then I, I recommend you, you put a um, you put a property manager in place. Let me just call these tips. Okay, so I think you put a property manager in place. Have that property manager uh, um, have them go ahead and answer all the inquiries on your on your HomeAway, VRBO, um, and Airbnb. Go ahead and have them handle all that. Have them do the check-ins and the checkouts and all that stuff. Um, Make sure that you, you pick a place that's going to be nice enough so that you're going to attract the right tenants. So it needs to be nice, right? Nice area, higher end. It doesn't need to be the bargain basement vacation. The problem there is, again, you, you could run into more problems there. Now, it's not always the case, but nicer, especially family friendly, is usually better for the long haul. Um, we already talked about utilities. Um, there's just more expenses that go into things like uh, not only utilities, you have like the like the washer dryer. These things go bad, right? Because these people don't always treat it as nicely as yours. So you've got some extra expenses that you need to throw into your overall calculation. But if you really study the numbers and you look at the other ones that are listed and you look at when they're rented um, and when they're not, you will get a much better understanding of exactly what you can peak, uh, pull in. And then my vote is gonna be Crank, oops, crank up the marketing once you uh, once you own it. What that means is you pay full blast for VRBO and Homeway. Pay, uh, you don't really pay full blast for Airbnb. They just charge you three percent. But uh, just crank it up. I, I did a, I did great uh, pictures with the photographer. Uh, I did a professional video. You don't always have to do professional video, but those kind of things make a difference. You want these people when they get there. To, to look at your property and want it before anybody else's. Uh, I don't necessarily think you should price yours lower than everybody else's. Just make yours pretty and inviting so they want to get yours rather than somebody else. Little things can make a big little uh, big difference, such as, you know, in my case, I've got bikes, I got paddle boards. By the way, I use this stuff myself anyway, so it's kind of cool. These become kind of like a tax deduction, right? Because they're all for your rental property but they're also uh, something you get to enjoy when you're there. So do the little extra, the little things that are gonna make a difference. And make sure you study this stuff to figure out what people want. Talk to a couple property managers around there. You know, interview them and ask them what really makes the difference. Why does some rent for a lot more and a lot, uh, they're more likely to get rented than everybody else. It makes a huge difference. You can, that's what's so beautiful about this. You can really study this in great detail so when you actually make the leap and close and purchase, you know what you're getting yourself into. In most cases, if, you, if you've done your homework right, it usually ends up better than you think. A lot of people worry about the place getting trashed. Usually they leave more than they take, okay? They will leave bottles of wine. They will be, leave uh, uh, bottles of water. They leave all kinds of stuff. So um, believe it or not, it actually ends up better than you think once you've closed on it. But you always you, you want to take the worst case scenario when you first close. And then, um, and then you just watch as it turns out better than you expected. All right, well, long video, but I hope this gives you some concrete wisdom on exactly how to turn your vacation home dream into a reality. Again, I'm Phil Pustiowski with freedommentor.com. Learn more about us at that website or grab my book, How to Be a Real Estate Investor. Some great wisdom on there as well. Uh, check out some more of these YouTube videos. If you've got any questions or comments, uh, put those just below this video. I try to carve out time out of my schedule to answer YouTube comments, so I'll do the best I can. Thanks so much for watching. Also, check out the uh, 
uh, the video that I have on my personal uh, vacation property so you can get a better understanding of what to do with yours. I hopefully give you some good tips by studying mine. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video.